Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. So this has been another binge week. Are we actually surprised when those of you who've been with me for a while, you know that I am a mood reader. So getting into it, I binge read Goku-san. I don't remember who the author is, but here's the series. Back when Goodreads was not owned by Amazon, they had a feature that I really enjoyed was their recommendations. And I went to find some manga recommendations and this was one of the ones I got. And while the art style is not my favorite, I fell in love with this story. It's about a first year teacher who her family is Yakuza, but she got into teaching because she wants to prove that no child is hopeless. They all have hope and you can actually help them if you care about them. And she starts working at an all-boys school that is known for being full of delinquents and troublesome students. And she's one of two female teachers that starts. And when she starts, the boys are in their second year. So she's the second year homeroom teacher and then teaches math as well. The, you know, the students, they're used to kind of picking on teachers and slowly she changes her students outlook of education and their own self-worth as well as helping the teachers come to realize they're really teaching here because they love the students even though the students get into trouble now one of her students who's actually the very smartest student in her class ends up falling in love with her and you find that out at the end of their second year he tells one of his friends makes a joke like what are you in love with the sensei and he's like i think probably and so then they go into their third year so there nothing happens between teacher and student while student is still in school but he's slowly realizing his feelings and she's becoming more confident as a teacher and then it's very interesting like the main series ends and there's no resolution to their relationship. So later on, an, another like extra volume came out, I guess. And then that shows the progress where he's in college, he's going to school, and they, can, they started to develop more of a relationship and he's pursuing her. If, I guess one of the traits is she's considered very manly. She always is fighting and like saving everyone. And he was, he's always like, that's what the man is supposed to do. They, and they, in that little one, they have a moment where she basically confesses her feelings and he accepts. He's like, yep. He's like, I've been waiting for this day when you would actually see me as a man and not just your ex-student. So it's sweet. And again, it's more about self-worth and some just crazy hijinks happen, especially as the kids find out that she comes from a Yakuza family. And then I binge read Wallflower, all except for the last three volumes because they weren't on the free online site. And this is about uh, four young men who are supposed to be the most beautiful boys in high school. And they, her, their landlady says, okay, I will make you rent free if you can turn my niece into a lady. And her niece, uh, Sunako, is a big fan of everything horror and has no interest in being a lady, especially because in middle school she confessed to the guy she liked and he called her ugly. So she has kind of a warped sense of self. And it's just a cute series as the boys are trying to turn her into a lady and she's fighting back and then they sometimes bribe her and it looks like, oh, she's a lady, and no, she's just done this to get this certain reward. So it's just for a brief moment, and then she goes back to just being herself. And eventually one of the young men is like, ah, whatever, just be yourself. And, you know, 
it's not a big deal. And then the others are like, oh, you like her. You know, they basically lie to the landlady that the two are in a relationship so that the landlady won't try to marry Sunako off to somebody else. It really is just some crazy hijinks. In this series, the characters never age. They're 15, like, forever. And you just go through multiple holidays with them. Kind of like Sunako's favorite holiday is Halloween. And you go through multiple Halloween parties and they're still 15. I think there, this is more of a realization. It's, it's okay to be yourself however you are yourself. And the people who really like you and care about you are going to accept you the way you are. I did, however, continue working on Babel. Got a little bit further on. Not as fun as my buddy reader, Margaret Bernard, but I am making progress. So this is like my focus is next week and I have to somehow figure out how to stop reading manga so that I can get that read. For my other media, watched some fun shows, cooking shows with my husband. And then this is where I'm trying to stop reading manga. I started watching the Orin Host Club because I've been like, now thinking, I want to reread The Orange Host Club. I want to reread Fruits Basket. But I don't have time to go through more manga wormholes. So I was like, well, I know that I've watched The Orange Host Club before. And I know it doesn't follow the book series exactly towards the conclusion. But it still gives the same feels. So I'm watching that. And we'll probably finish that this weekend. And I'm hoping that will then help me to read what I should read. Also, it's fun to just dive back into these worlds. As I've been watching Lauren Host Club, because I'm watching the dubbed version, I'm just listening to the voice actors and just thinking, like, the choices that they're making as voice actors is interesting. Especially with how to express different emotions. I know this is like just a kind of cheesy one as well. And it's this is a anime series that is self-aware. Like even the main characters like or yeah, even one of the guys is like, "Hey, this is a anime series, and that means me and the girl, we are the love interests." And yeah, they're kind of brought together as love interests at the end, but mostly it's about her, he, and her time in this host club where she's pretending to be a boy. And that concludes my next August wrap-up. Kind of for things coming in the future, Space Opera September is just around the corner, and I'm doing awful on my magical readathon TBR since I went down the manga binge. I don't know if I'm going to make an official TBR for Space Opera September. I really want to. I just don't know if I have the bandwidth. It might be something where I wait to do the challenges until December when I do have more bandwidth. But yeah, so that has been my weekly wrap up. <laughs>